It's often useful to know some quick statistics about our data, things like the minimum or maximum values or the distinct count of items in a column. These statistics and more can be quickly and easily obtained using the Power Query function table.profile. Let's take a look. Here I have some sales data in a table called locations that shows sales figures for various cities and their respective countries. I'm going to load this table into Power Query. Let me bring it over into view. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this query. So right click, duplicate. I'm going to call this one stats. And in the formula bar, I'm going to add a new step. And in here, I'm simply going to wrap this in the table.profile function. Close parentheses and press enter. You can see I now have my locations table columns listed in the first column and then a column name for each statistic. However, it's not that easy to read. So I'm going to add a new step that demotes the headers. And then I can go to the transform tab and transpose the data. It's much easier to read in this layout. So let's promote the headers. And now I can see the stats for each of the fields in my table. We can see right away the min, max, average, etc. for the sales column. We can also see the min and max for the city and country tax columns, which in some cases might be useful. You can see the count for cities, countries and sales is 37, meaning we have 37 rows of data. The distinct count for the country column tells us that we have data for six different countries. The null count for the sales column is two, so there are two rows without a sales value, and this might indicate something that we need to look into. Now every column in this table is a list, and so I can create a new query and refer to the stats for the sales, for example. So let's right click, new query, other sources, blank query, and in here I simply type in equals stats sales. If I wanted to get the maximum value for the stats sales column, it'll be this second row here. If we go back to the stats, you can see the max is on the second row. Now, Power Query uses a zero index. Therefore, the minimum is zero, row zero. Maximum is row one. So going back here, I can add the index one to just return the maximum sales value. And of course, I could give this query a name, sales max. Now I can access these statistics directly inside our queries to either do some quick checks on the data, or you could use these values in your Excel reports or in visuals in Power BI. For example, I could go to my locations table and add a custom column to calculate the percentage sales are of the maximum sales value. So we take the sales divided by our query called sales max. We can set this to a percentage data type. And now we can see that the sales for Australia, for the city of Brisbane are 98.35% of the maximum sales value. Now, of course, there are other simpler ways to achieve this calculation, but this illustrates the use of these stats in other calculations. Now, one of the main reasons for generating stats is for auditing and assessing the quality of your data. And there are some other useful tools built into Power Query to help with this. You'll find them on the view tab of the ribbon in the data preview group. Here, the column profile brings up a similar set of stats for each column. We can see them at the bottom. Let me make it a bit bigger. You can select different columns to change the preview. You can interact with the value distribution chart. And on the right hand side in the ellipsis, we can copy the data and we can change the group by. So at the moment, it's grouping it by value. You can see the different country values. We can group it by text length. We get a slightly different view of the data. We can even right click and filter based on text that equals a text length of seven. And then you can see the table is now filtered. Only Germany and Ireland have a text length of seven. Let me remove that filtered rows step and we'll look at the other options available. The column distribution gives you both a visual indication of the frequency and distribution of values and the number of distinct and unique values in each column. And column quality summarizes the percentage of valid, error and empty cells in each column. Now by hovering over any of the columns, you're presented with the numerical distribution of the quality of values throughout that column. 
Additionally, you can select the ellipses here and you get further options. Now by default, Power Query performs data profiling over the first 1000 rows of your data. To have it operate over the entire data set, go down to the bottom left, click on the column profiling, and here you can choose column profiling based on the entire data set. Well, I hope you found this technique useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.